All right, hello everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started today in our last topic of this unit, which is going to be on how the cell cycle is actually regulated. So uh, yesterday, or I guess today, um, we built models of the cell cycle. So now we're going to talk about how does the cell know when to move from end phase to interphase or to these different phases within the meiotic phase and so on. Okay. So when we uh, move from phase to phase within the cell cycle, there's going to be internal controls or checkpoints that are going to help regulate cell cycle progression. And the ones that you need to know for this class is the metaphase, the G1, and the G2 checkpoint. And these three things are going to have certain um, factors that they're going to be checking for before the cell is allowed to move on to the next stage. Okay. First one is going to be the G1 uh, checkpoint. This is going to make sure you have enough nutrients, growth factors, and that there is no DNA damage before the DNA is replicated in the S phase. Next, you have the G2 checkpoint. This is going to double check that all your DNA is replicated and that it is replicated correctly to reduce the amount of mutations that occur. And then you have the metaphase checkpoint. And this is going to make sure that your chromosomes are properly attached uh, at the spindle fiber and everything is lined up in the middle so that you have an accurate splitting of um, chromosomes when you finally get to the anaphase slash telophase. Now, if any of these checkpoints are reached and all of the factors are not done correctly, what's going to happen is the cell is going to undergo a process called apoptosis. And apoptosis is essentially just means programmed cell death. So if there's a mutation in the DNA or the DNA didn't duplicate correctly, that cell is not going to want to divide because then you're going to get things like cancers. And so to kill itself, it's usually going to make a protein called the P53 protein. So the P53 protein essentially is a self-regulating messenger within the cell, uh, that local types of signaling, uh, those autocrine signaling, if you might remember that from the first lecture, uh, is going to occur, to which that P53 is going to start a response pathway in the cell, causing it to kill itself so that you do not have cancer risk uh, and keep the organism healthy overall. So. Uh, we talked about the checkpoints, we've talked about the steps within it. So how does the cell actually know when to move from step to step? Well, that's going to be done through a series of proteins, just like everything else, called cyclins. And cyclins are used to promote or inhibit the cell cycle progression based on their absence or presence. So here on the left you can see a graph that shows different concentrations of cyclin proteins as they move through the different phases. So you can see when you have high G1 and S cyclin levels, that is when you start to transition to the S phase. And then S cyclin is how you kind of transition to the G2 phase and so on and so forth. So these cyclins are almost like the ligands that serve as a way to make sure the cell knows to move from step to step. To the right here, you can actually see an example of a cyclin, a cyclin, sorry. Uh, and you can see some of those concepts that we talked about in unit one in terms of alpha helixes, beta sheets, and quaternary structure. So how do these cyclins actually work? Well, these um, cyclins are going to communicate with another type of protein, an enzyme to be more specific, which are called CDKs, or cyclin-dependent kinases. So ACEs meaning that they're an enzyme. So without cyclin, what's going to happen is the CDK is going to stay inactive. If it doesn't have a cyclin or that substrate, you can think of it as, if it doesn't have that substrate, it's not going to be able to do its reaction. So the DNA synthesis enzymes will stay inactive, for example. Now when the cyclin comes in, and what the cyclin in can be anything, so let's say it's the S cyclin, right? When that S cyclin comes in, it's going to uh, let CDK phosphorylize the DNA synthesis enzymes so that DNA synthesis occurs. So anytime we want to do synthesis, well, we're going to need the cyclin to turn on the CDK so that the CDK can cause the proper response. Now, when the processes stop or inhibited, when the cyclin eventually dissolves away. So as you can see, we always have a phase in which the cyclins disappear. That's because we no longer want that process to occur, right? The S cyclin is going to help DNA replication to occur, but we don't always want DNA replication occurring. We want it to happen, and then we want it to stop. So what's going to happen is those cyclins will start to dissolve over time, which we can see here, which will um, stop DNA 
uh, synthesis enzymes from still occurring. So the cyclin will disappear, DNA synthesis enzymes will stop being phosphorylated, which means you're going to stop DNA synthesis overall. Okay. All right. So as I said before, these cyclin levels are going to fluctuate throughout cell division. So here we have cyclin levels, and they're rapidly going to fluctuate uh, depending on where the cell needs to be at any given time and what processes need to occur. Okay. Now, <clears throat> cells aren't always going to be going through the cell cycle. They're not always going to be going through interphase or emphase. Sometimes they're just going to be in a resting phase in which they are just doing their daily function uh, and have no need to grow or develop or reproduce. And this is what we refer to as the GO phase. So the GO phase is going to be that resting phase. Now, uh, what's going to control these cyclins? What's going to control these CDKs? Uh, those are going to be certain types of genes. Uh, and there are two types of genes normally that are going to control this. There's proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes are any type of genes that encode for proteins that increase cellular respiration. I'm sorry, not cellular respiration. Uh, the cell cycle. So anytime you want to increase the cell cycle or cause transition of different phases in the cell cycle, those are going to be carried out by proto-oncogenes. Any type of genes that reduce the amount of cell cycling going on, those are going to be tumor suppression genes. So you can think of them as a gas or a break. Now, if you have mutations in either of these genes, that is typically where your cancers are going to come from. If you have mutations in your proto-oncogenes, you might have too much gas, which means you're reproducing way too much, and then you start to get tumors. Or if you have mutations in your tumor suppression gene, you have no break. So again, you're reproducing like crazy because you can never enter that GO phase or that resting phase. So you're constantly reproducing. Right? So these proto-oncogenes and tumor suppression genes in, uh, are going to create our cyclins and CDKs, which is going to influence how often cell division occurs. Okay? All right, so that's going to be uh, it for this lecture. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you write them down, and we will talk about them tomorrow.